Trying to see if this is working. Oh, it says I'm live. It just is not showing anything. Well, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Network error. Hmm. I do have a visual screen, but it's just not showing it. Is it because I have just chatting selected? Oh, okay, there's the visual. Now it seems Is to be working. Is it because I have just chatting? All right, we are live, and it's been about a minute and a half, but uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and get started with things. Um, it does seem as though, like, you know, uh, everything's working and whatnot, so... I have my... Oh, hold on. I have things pulled off on my computer. But I can also have... Stream Manager pulled up on my phone. I don't know. Usually when I watch other people, I have both my phone and my computer going, so don't know if any of those will be prevalent, but yes, that is what we are doing at the moment. Okay. Well, I have two viewers. Don't know how I can view who those are. I think those are both of me, to be perfectly honest. Let's see, what happens if I close this? Does that take it down to one viewer? Probably me and a bot, now that I think about it. I have 20 followers though. It's really annoying that it like moves like that. Oh, well. We are just going to keep trucking right along. We are just going to keep trucking right along. <coughs> okay. Well, uh, one thing that I usually do to start off a stream is to sort of check the sound quality and uh, I guess waste time and, you know, I guess, make up, uh, you know, basically wait for people to join, I guess, I don't know, um, as I sing a little song. I do have a couple songs prepared and on deck, you know, some fun, some sad, um, but uh, I think what I'm going to choose it's probably just something a little well I guess I am a little sad because well just like my previous streams I invited a few people some good friends and no one really showed up but that's pretty typical that's alright um I could just go with a nice little classic I suppose Let's 
see. How about... I do like me some good Halsey. Your little brother never tells you, but he loves you so. You said your mother only smiles on her TV show. You're only happy when you saw me head is filled with dope. I hope you make it to the day you're 28 years old. You're dripping like a saturated sunrise. You're spilling like an overflowing sink You're ripped to every edge but you're a masterpiece And now you're tearing through the pages and the ink Everything is blue His pills, his hands, his jeans And now I'm covered in the colors Pulled apart at the seams And it's blue And it's blue Everything is gray His hair, his smoke, his dreams And now he's so devoid of color You don't know what it means And he's blue And he's blue Ooh, You were a vision in the morning When the light came through I know I've only felt religion with you you said you'll never be forgiven till your boys are too and I'm still waking in the morning but it's not with you you're dripping like a saturated sunrise you're spilling like an overflowing sink you're up to every edge, but you're a masterpiece. And now you tear through the pages and the ink. Ooh. Everything is blue. His pills, his hands, his jeans. And now I'm covered in the colors. Pull the blood at the seams. And he's blue. And he's blue Everything is gray His hair, his smoke, his jeans And now he's so devoid of color He don't know what it means And he's blue And he's blue And you liked me because I was blue. But you touched me and suddenly I was a lilac sky. And you decided that purple just wasn't for you. Everything is blue. His pills, his hands, his jeans. And now I'm covered in the colors pulled apart at the seams. And it's blue. And it's blue Everything is gray His hair, his smoke, his dreams And now he's so devoid of color He don't know what it means And he's blue And he's blue <sighs> yep, that's that's about it. Um, let's see if I can't get. It says that I'm not live on Twitch on Discord, which is interesting. I don't know how to do that though. Let's see. Da, 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 da. 
Oh. Oh. All I have to do is that. There we go. That's not it. <laughs> Oh, it's... Uh, hmm. Well. Never mind. That's quite alright. I don't expect anybody to join the stream anyways. That's fine. The, um... The main reason why I wanted to stream is because I, uh... Oh, someone just... <laughs> hey, goblins. Thanks for showing up. Love the new emote. Oh, and you followed me. Thank you. I don't know if I'm going to be streaming very often. Um on occasion hopefully I'm gonna start and try to do it because all of my friends are streaming and I want to support them with that so I figured I don't know I guess I'll I'll try it too I'll I I wanna I wanna start putting myself out there as well and you know start trying to do my own thing because I feel like one of the biggest things that I do is I latch onto people and I'm you know, trying to, you know, do what they're doing or help them, you know, I feel of like myself more as a catalyst than like my own thing. So that's sort of where I'm at. Um, oh, but since we're, I guess we're starting to get into the podcast, how about we move to this? It's just a fun little uh, thing we've got going on. That's my uh, my typical art. That's in the the um my my typical channel art, I guess, or whatever. Um, in the bottom left, I I got a commission to do that. I paid someone to do that for me. Um, not really sure why. Again, I uh, oh, Heathen's hair. Hello. Welcome. Um, the whole sparrow thing, I'm not really sure where it came from. I just kind of got it uh, at one point in time. Hello. Um, and I kind of just embraced it since then. I think it's because on my YouTube channel, I didn't really have like a, a, a name, like a, a good, uh, like a good thing. I kept like flip-flopping between different random things I'm like like uh, oh, I'll, I'll change it later or I'll, I'll, I'll do something different and so I, I finally just had to settle down on something so I just picked you know sparrow because uh, sparrows are my favorite bird they're my favorite animal um, because they're they're very common and yet they're very you know they're simple you know, but they're still nice, you know, they're still pretty beautiful. If you look at sparrows, they actually, like, are really, like, really pretty. They've got, like, a lot of stuff. You know, people think of, like, cockatiels or, like, parrots or whatever when they think of, like, birds. Like, there's a there's a whole variety in, like, ducks and geese and whatnot. Um, but sparrows actually also have uh, a lot of variety and, uh, you know... I think they're very nice, um, but because they're so common, I feel like they're invisible, and I feel like that's that's sort of the thing that I guess represents me most is that um, my entire life I sort of learned to be invisible, um, just sort of in make myself uh, not a bother, you know. Very much trying to, you know, like not reach out and bother people or interact with other people at all because I always feared that I was a uh, negative impact on people um, and whatnot. Hey, welcome Dr. Forrester. Um, just sort of giving a little 
intro to me and my backstory. Um, but so yeah, being, you know, I feel like I've always wanted to be someone else, something else, anything uh, else. Um, but you know, I, w I would always think about like other people, you know, what they're going through. Um, because I was bullied a lot, I, I would spend a lot of time by myself. Um, and I would sort of think about other people and, you know, their lives and, you know, try to think of anything else other than what I'm going through and experiencing and whatnot. I'm getting off on so many tangents, but I swear I'm getting back to the point. Um, <laughs> so I would, I would spend my time thinking about other people and their lives and their entire situation, you know, their whole life story. And that's sort of the reason why I would consider if I interact with this person, will I make a good impression? Will I, you know, make a positive impact on them? And for the most part, it would be no. So I just wouldn't ever reach out and interact with them and whatnot. Um, but also because I was bullied, you know, I would very much try to be in the background. I, I would try to understand. I would try to make myself, you know, very, like, I, I tried to blend in. I tried to do what people asked of me. Uh, it started off because I didn't know any better. Um, so I kind of just trained myself to do that. I learned. Um, but also because I'm the second child, you know. Um, <laughs> nice. Um, because of, you know, being second child, you know, first child. I, I will say that my sister was quite, uh, you know, very much needing attention. Uh, very loud, you know, the, the absolute loudest baby, she would cry, scream, yell, like, uh, dusk till dawn, it was quite a problem, <laughs> nice marshmallows, um, and it got to be, like, such an issue, but, you know, those are stories for another time, um, but she does have great lungs now, <laughs> she's a, she's a music teacher, she plays almost every instrument, she's a great singer, um, <laughs> But uh, I, I, was, I was the angel baby. I was the very quiet child that uh, went to bed when I was supposed to, you know, ate, ate food that was given to me. You know, I, I, I never ask anything of people. I, I can't. I just can't. I've just been so trained my entire life to sort of not necessarily hold myself back, but... I mean, honestly, I'm a fairly content person. I can be left alone for hours on end in an empty room with nothing to do and can be quite content. Not just like playing around in my own mind, but you know, just sitting down, being peaceful and whatnot. Um, and some of that is, you know, good. You would think that that would be good. But, you know, in school, like having deadlines, having stuff that you have to do and get done uh, very much was a problem for me. So, and you know, going back to what I was talking about with people and, you know, observing them, trying to learn what was wrong with me, why I need to be better, why, trying to understand why people were picking on me and bullying me, which, you know, I could spend that hours on it and giving you stories about those but those are probably pretty sad um the main thing that I discovered is that while I always wanted to be somebody else I just I I dared and dreamed for the chance the opportunity to be somebody else anything else but never once did I want anyone to have to be me in all the fantasies that I had made up of all the op options and opportunities to you know be something else do something different be somebody live their life I never once thought to make someone else take my place you know never swap with them because I would never force that upon anyone and I realized that I am the only person that can be me. I'm the only one that would survive. I, I'm the only one that can handle it. Not just because, you know, I've learned how to at this point. Uh, you know, like I've 
gotten used to it discovered this it's it's who i am you know my mentality which has been able to sort of understand and you know learn how to cope and uh get a handle on you know my own mentality uh body and you know uh, you know whatever uh i've sort of figured out how to control that you know um it's sort of that's the main reason why i realized that i only i can be me you know so there's got to be something that i'm good for you know uh, i always wanted to be a girl you know, I, I always thought, like, girls were pretty awesome, you know, I love girl clothes, you know, I, I'd love to wear fun outfits, uh, but they, they don't look good on me, you know, I'm a guy, I'm, I'm, I'm a straight, cis white human male, um, I'm just completely standard boring, you know, that's, that's just who I am, that's, you know, I would have liked to have been a girl, but I don't feel like I'm a girl. I like I don't think that I am. So, you know, but basically going back to what I was trying to say is that I I would have liked to have been a girl, but I I know that I am. So there's only certain things that I can do. You know, I'd love to just sort of hang out with girls and like have girlfriends and you know like just chat and try on clothes and you know be silly and funny and you know, do all that sort of stuff, but I, I'm a guy, so it's, it's a bit harder, you know, it's, it's a bit more difficult, and there's those sort of natural boundaries that are hard to cross, and it makes sense, um, but being a guy, you know, I'm stronger, I'm taller, I can, I can do certain things that normally I wouldn't be able to do, you know, I can, I can reach that top shelf, I can lift that heavy thing, you know, I can, you know, do all sorts of stuff. Um, so as a guy, I do have some natural, I guess, benefits to being able to get closer to uh, girls and whatnot. In I don't, where am I going with this? I have no clue. Um, <laughs> um, the point being is that, you know, I am me. And... I guess that's really all there is to it, you know. It's it's unfortunate because I feel like so many people try to be someone else, to try and fit in and be unique. You know, I've got to be my own person just like everybody else, and it's so confusing uh, for me. Like, I don't understand a whole lot about socializing and interacting with people normally um, there's just a lot of I didn't get a lot of opportunities to try things I matured when I was very young um, for the first couple years of my life I was retarded so I couldn't think straight I couldn't remember I was literally in a daze sort of behind a screen watching this thing run my body and it wasn't until like some few years during one of the many many middle schools that I went to because I kept dropping out um, I will say though that uh, he heathen of heaven says I will say though that the only thing stopping you from going out and hanging out with girls or shopping or trying on clothes is that I'm a guy, therefore I can't. No, it, it's less of that. It you know, it's not that sort of mentality. It's literally the fact that, um, well, there's a lot of stuff about me as well. Like I have social anxiety, or you know, I where I'd like to try on clothes. You know, I I've never actually gone clothes shopping. Um, but I'm also the type of person that doesn't like to take on, uh, or bleh, put on and take off clothes, like, constantly, you know, I, I want to put something on and just, like, stay that way, I'm, I'm very much a, like I said, I'm a, hmm, what's the proper word for this, uh, I'm a casual person, I'm, I'm a complacent person, 
I'm a very mellow, you know, steady person where I get to a certain state and I stay there. Um, you know, not much shifts me. And so, like, actually, during this heat wave where it's cool inside and hot outside, that's one of the many things that gets me sick is the hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. That wears me out more than just being in the sun. Um, you know, I feel like during the summer is the only time that I catch a cold. You know, it's kind of interesting where my system, like, does not handle uh, change very well. Um, but going back to the only thing stopping you from, you know, doing what you want is thinking that you can't. Um, I will say that there are certain parts about, you know, not necessarily the rules of social interaction, but I will say that there are a lot of things where it really isn't okay for guys to go shopping for clothes with girls, you know. Guys don't try on lingerie with women. That's just not a thing that works out. Um, but as we've sort of progressed through this day and age, you know, um, where genders are more uh, widespread, is that the proper word? I'm not certain. Um, you know, it it's it's gotten to be, I feel, actually possibly even confusing, uh, blended. There we go. Um, blended's, blended's not a bad word. I think, like, um, hmm, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Gradient, maybe? You know, it's more fluid? I'm not certain. Um, but I feel like that can be very hard, especially in a, an establishment where, uh, we're fuzzing the lines of gender and I'm here for it. Nice. Um, in an establishment where you have, you know, men's clothes and girls' clothes, um, because there are, there are men's clothes and there are girl clothes. Um, that's just sort of how it is, you know, there's not necessarily, I mean, there's a lot of clothes that are gender neutral or gender fluid, like you can wear either or, um, or either or. Uh, I wear v-necks. I like to wear v-necks because uh, I don't like having something very tight around my neck. You know, I can't stand turtlenecks. Um, I mean, I could wear like a collared shirt or whatever, but I have to unbutton one of the buttons. Um, back to the point of having an establishment where you have to differentiate uh, having, you know, separate bathrooms, separate changing areas. Um, it can be very much a... Uh, Hazard's not the word I'm looking for, but it can be very uh, treacherous for companies to allow uh, men or women or whatever gender to be in the same area because it does make other people uncomfortable. Um, so sometimes when you're trying to make people comfortable, you can make other people uncomfortable. So you really do have to sort of default to some of the more generic and basic uh, guidelines, um, which I think most people are okay with, you know, uh, you know, when you've got, I was gonna say urinals, but let's go with, uh, drinking fountains that are taller or shorter, you know, just because there's a taller drinking fountain doesn't mean that they're saying like, haha, you're short, you can't drink at this drinking fountain. They're saying, no, there are tall people and there are short people. I guess it would be more referring to probably adult and child, I suppose. Um, but again, you know, even children can be upset that, hey, you don't have, uh, or you're trying to make me use the baby uh, drinking fountain, basically. So there's a lot of that stuff where, you know, trying to accommodate everyone can still make uh, people upset and whatnot. Um, so, you know, sort of got to be careful at the uh at the place that i work we have separate bathrooms um, because you know you make multiple bathrooms um but most of the time when you when you do construction you have to provide two bathrooms at least um referring to amount of floor space and uh not living conditions necessarily but you know in office buildings you know where there are uh certain 
criteria to be met for the amount of bodies per floor. You have to have a certain amount of bathrooms and whatnot. Um, and they always do it in pairs um, just because I think it rounds that way, but also probably because, you know, referring to having male and female bathrooms. Um, and that's, that's a good point of order because there is, you know, that sort of default. Um, man, I was not thinking we were going to get this political or, you know, deep into gender roles and whatnot. Um, but you have to have, uh, gender neutral bathrooms are fine. You know, uh, we definitely have bathrooms where, you know, it's just a toilet. It's literally just a toilet. You know, there's no urinal. I, I, I will say that in, in some of the places we do have, uh, in the men's bathroom, there is a urinal, but in the women's bathroom, there's like a baby changing table, you know, are you you know, just because you're a woman, does that mean that you are carrying around the child? You know, sometimes the, the husband or the father, you know, whatever, can be taking the child or whatever. Um, so you can go into the women's bathroom then because it's literally just the same bathroom or whatever. Um, clothes organization fix. Section for pants, section for dresses, section for skirts, then maybe two sections for shirts and you, but they're baby changing stations. Right? Yeah, no, I know. Um, there's like family bathrooms or whatever. They they like label it as family bathrooms, basically, or whatever. Um, the point being is that when it comes down to a um, the the point that I was trying to make is that in a stricter like company uh, setting, they do have to sort of make those guidelines and whatnot. Um, and I was getting back to a point about that with something else. Um, but let's go on to the topic of clothes section. Um, I think the point of having girls and guys section helps because that sort of narrows down your search. Uh, if you just have like a warehouse where you're just looking at rows and work, you know, you don't go to Costco for clothes shopping. That's just not what you do. You just don't do that. You know, you go there for deals and whatnot, or, you know, you peruse if you're looking for something. You know, they do have good quality stuff, but that's not where you go to to browse. Also, the bathrooms say you can just say it has urinals and has stalls. Um, see, that's the thing that I, I disagree with, though, because that's like trying to be politically correct. You know, we have signs on our bathrooms, you know, above them may say ladies or gentlemen, you know, because those are just printed on. But we also have signs that say gender neutral. We just got like the freaking symbol and just spatched it on there because it doesn't matter. You know, it's not like a locker room where you can go in or, you know, like those multiple bathrooms where, you know, it's got multiple stalls and urinals or whatever. It, it's literally like separate rooms, you know. It's just the, the one room, you close the door, um, and then it's got like the toilet and then the sink and everything. It's it's all in there. It's like one conjoined room. Um, and those are sort of the, the ones. And honestly, I think those are the best way to go um, because that can uh, provide a lot of stuff. And, you know, it's, it's more personable that way and uh, easier to clean, honestly. When you've got one of those very, very large bathrooms, it's, it's so hard to maintain. Um, I mean, just putting what amenities it has may be PC, but it also the easiest to understand. That's the thing, though, is that if you just constantly default to the specific, you know, like, you know, if you if you keep going down that route, it's never going to stop because, you know, then we go back to, OK, what is gender? Scientifically speaking, you know, the X and Y, you know. If you if you dare say men and women, well, then you're just you're sexist. Okay, well, fine. Let's say that this one has urinals and this one's has salt. Well, excuse me, I don't use either of those things. I I would prefer uh, a a hole in the floor that doesn't even you know bring attention to what body part I'm using to piss with. You know, there's always going to be people that are going to be so upset with however you define things so I don't think that there's any reason with uh, why wouldn't it stop why does it have to not stop because people are never happy you can never please everybody 
there's always going to be some person that's going to have some argument or something with something. You know, it, it just continues. It just spirals. You know, and that's the problem with, uh, I think, with a lot of our issues right now with politics and whatnot and genders, equality and whatnot, is that we're, we keep trying to make more and more rules and, like, guidelines and, like, be, be nice about, be aware, you know, be, try to appease this person and then it just gets so specific, well, well, you gave them special attention, well, so why not about us? And it, it's got, it's, it's almost, you know, the, the point of the fact is that there's no specific answer. There's no right way to do anything, you know? So sometimes you do just have to walk into a room sit down and do your business you know if they don't have the very specific color of wallpaper or you know you know the right label on the on the the the, the wooden door that you walk through then you know i i don't think that's a big issue but again i'm i'm probably not the expert to be discussing this because I am a white, cis, you know, straight male. So I'm not saying that I'm an expert at all. <laughs> Go into a room and sit down, do my business is my point. It doesn't feel like it's your point, though. Because it feels like you're saying that, well, why aren't they, why aren't they making these rules? You know, why aren't they making it simple? Why aren't they, like defaulting to using these very simplistic archaic terms when I feel like we have been using these archaic terms because for the longest time and I feel like a lot of people are going to get disappointed in me if I say this but you know from the generic point of view there has been like two genders and so now we're just now discovering that and it's like well we have to like Re reorganize everything now or like redefine like what science is now and I, I just don't know how to feel about that you know I'm not certain I have no idea what all the genders are I, I have tried you know I've and there's a difference between genders and sexuality and like that's even more confusing for me and I, I just don't know I don't understand I, I have a hard time but I feel like every single time I try to study this, it keeps changing. And I don't think the government should decide how to define who does what and who goes where. You know, I feel like people are people and we should have enough, you know, respect for one another and the responsibility of ourselves to be able to say, hey, you know, this person isn't doing me a uh, good justice, but I think that I I'm I almost said man enough. Uh, I'm I'm a strong enough person that I'm going to be able to overcome that. You know, I I'm very much willing to sort of step outside my comfort zone and understand that that person is doing a wrong thing. You know, that person is putting me down. They may not know it. They may not understand at all if I try to explain it to them but you know I'm not going to attack that person for offending me history is very very gay <laughs> there has been a lot of effort uh, put in put in to make it seem straight when taught in school oh no no I'm not talking about that at all I I, I don't think gay was invented in 20 uh, 20, 20 2018 2018 is I don't know I don't know when LGBTQ um, got like very very prominent and recognized uh, but yeah no absolutely uh, it's been around. nature makes it simple gotta do your business there's a bush and it doesn't care who or what it <laughs> because it's a bush just make sure you're not using poison ivy on your naughty bits yes absolutely um, and sometimes you know, sometimes you have to use what nature provides. 
sometimes you do have to you know just use the freaking uh I don't know why uh what what's the what's the what's the deer porter potty thank you goodness gracious porter potty you know that's very much uh considered the most like generic and yet at the same time seems to be very male centric because not just as they're a toilet which both men and women can use act because specifically the toilet has like that part cut out so that the trail can happen without having to lift up the seat but there is also a urinal that you can use in case ping into that thing isn't easy enough for you no it's just it just baffles me you know they they try so hard they try everything and you know everyone's always going to be upset about something you know um i have completely lost what my original point was uh i think it was something about socializing and how i want to you know um i think i said i was saying that i want it to be a girl because i feel like i would enjoy going out you know trying on clothes wearing fancy outfits uh you know i i adore women fashion you know i i love skirts i love dresses i think they're very pretty i would love to have long hair and do it up i love braiding you know i just all that that cool stuff not makeup i hate makeup i feel like makeup is just kind of weird i do understand that people like not not just that people are using like to hide or whatever i i very much understand that people feel like they need to put it on to feel normal that's that's still pretty bad um i feel like i i i do understand that people feel like they need makeup no that's still wrong what what's the thing that i'm trying to say here that you know it's like tea you know makeup is like tea because you know it's it's a common thing that people use that is completely normal and you know people have opinions about it and some people try too hard and some people do it too strong um and sometimes you are trying to go for a specific look or whatever um uh my my problem with makeup is that i don't think it's natural and i do feel like it's lying and i don't think people need to hide um so that's sort of my two cents on makeup um but i do understand that it is completely normal um you know it's like wearing underwear it's just like a natural thing that you do to help your body because sometimes your body needs help um on the whole i think women's fashion gets to be more experiment and creative than men's as for long hair it's really kind of a hassle uh experimental um i feel like there is more variety in women's clothing you know men get like shirts and pants um you know long 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 sleeve shirts or shorts um but i feel like girls get like they get blouses you know they get tops they get uh skirts shirts and pants and whatnot you know and and i know there's the whole thing of well guys can wear those too they they are very much designed towards the body of the the feminine wiles you know there's there's a bit of a difference between a man wearing a kilt and a girl wearing a skirt and that's fine but we need to you know i think that's understandable i think that's recognizable that there is a difference between uh you know and i'm not trying to be hateful um but like when you pointed out that like uh a guy wearing tight pants and a girl wearing tight pants or or let's go with yoga pants um actually hold on heathen of heaven says the cutout part on the toilet is just standardization for commercial use source father is a mechanical designer and does plumbing and hvac on building designs for living yes no i know that uh i own a shawl it's pretty much a blanket with a neck hole and it's comfy yeah absolutely um i mean there's freaking what's the what's the 
the um the blanket that you you wear like it has like armholes it's so stupid because that's literally just a sweater but it's a blanket instead um it's like a very stupid name like a snuggie or something um you know if you're if you're cold put on a sweater that's what it's designed for it's designed to make you warmer by wrapping it around your body and it's like built to like it's a shirt you know it's built to wrap around your body and provide maximum heat and comfort you know i feel like people think that sweaters are uncomfy because of what they see in movies or whatnot but there are actually like lots of really nice uh sweaters um yeah probably snuggies the the word or whatever um goodness i got like off track again on where I was going with something. The, um... Going back to... Oh, yoga pants. Um, I was describing, like, the difference between... Again, uh, for now, I'm just going to sort of differentiate between the two generic genders. Um, I do know that there are different genders... There, there's different physical bodies and then there's also different mental and like the 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 whatever uh, so if I'm referring to the two genders I please I hope that doesn't like offend people you know because like when I learned out that there was other genders there was like nine genders and now there's like 23 and now there's like 47 I think I I legitimately think that I think we're up to 47 now or something. Um, but I could be, like, completely wrong. Um, so please, just... I, I hope that doesn't offend you when I... When I'm when I'm specifically referring between the two uh, base genders. Is base? Is the prop... Um, what's, ref what's a good word that defines, like, the old reference? Because that's what I'm going off of. Um, which I feel like most of like the the world is sort of still using or whatnot. Um, anywho, the there is a difference between a guy and a girl wearing the same outfit. You know, if a girl wears a dress and a guy wears a dress. You know, I'm not saying that a guy can't look good in a dress. I'm just saying that I don't look good in a dress. You know, there there's so many times. That I've walked down the street and looked at a dress and I've just been like so torn because it looks so nice and you know it's not like one of those things of oh man I I wish my girlfriend wore that or I I wish I I knew someone that I could give this dress to it's literally that I think the dress looks nice and maybe if I was someone that could wear something like that I would be interested in purchasing it purchasing it for myself um but at the same time like you know let's say that i was a female looking at a dress wanting a dress which this happens that you you really like it you think it would be really cool you try it on and it still just doesn't work it doesn't blend so even though you really like this dress and you can wear this dress it just doesn't work out for whatever reason and that does happen from some time there is a biological sex, gender identity, gender attraction, romantic attraction, and aesthetic attraction. Aesthetic? You're talking about biological. Yeah. Well, I think people are saying that biological sex, there's like multiple now. I do know that there are, there's like, I think, oh my goodness, I, uh, I failed biology. Uh, I think men is like XY and women is xx or something or whatever um but there's like there are there are people that have like a mismatch and combination of these you know not just people that have both parts or you know or like a combination of different parts or whatever there there are people with biologically like a combination of things um and those people can be completely fine you know they can be uh, attracted to one or the other or like have their own mentality or whatnot or whatever um, 
Also, the thoughts of that dress looks nice is a, an example as aesthetic attraction. X X Y Y Y is a thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, exactly. So. All right. You know what? Cards on the table. Let's do me. I I feel as though I. But I assume you were talking about intersex. I I don't know. I am not a. I'm very much outside the scope of sexuality, you know, genders, you know, all of that. I, I haven't had any interaction with that in my entire life up until, like, meeting Otter, basically. Um, uh, but let's, let, let's do me. I feel as though uh, the gender that I was born with, I, straight white male, is who I am, that is what I feel like, um, and not just because society or whatever, um, I do feel like that. I do have a natural uh, attraction to women. Um, although I, I will say that, you know, I can see and appreciate, uh, you know, all genders. Uh, you know, people can be attractive there there's been several men that I've looked at that said wow he is way more attractive than I am um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I've been attracted to them but I can see and appreciate I guess that wouldn't be the same never mind then um, I I have been attracted to other people and it does get confusing when people are different than the bodies that they're in or whatever so you know if like a guy in a guy body is attracted to a guy in a girl's body or something I'm I'm already so lost uh, cisgendered heterosexual with broadest like to appreciate I I am a girl fan I am a big fan of girls. I think girls are super cool. Uh, wish I could be one. Um, or wished. You know, past tense. Um, for the longest point of time, um, I had, you know, like all these... Um, but they were daydreams. And I, and I had to move past them because I am not a female. Uh, I am not a girl in a man's body. And I understand that. And, you know not needed to come to terms with it but needed to sort of accept that um and move on you know start pursuing you know my own you know skills and abilities i suppose um of who i am what i am and whatnot i guess sorry this is getting real confusing um but i i very much um you know I don't enjoy cooking, but I am a good cook. Um, I don't think I'm a very good singer, but I, I enjoy singing. Um, I can't read music. I can't understand uh, music theory and pitch and whatnot. Um, but I do know how to make a joyful noise. I know the heart and soul behind art uh, in music and also, you know, drawing and whatnot um so i can i i can see that and i can sort of copy that and do you know art that way basically um i i don't think i have uh the physical attributes to get a well-trained body it's just not in my family i have natural dna that makes me sort of tall um not necessarily lanky um you know, sort of, um, but my body, uh, my family is also prone to diabetes, um, so there is sort of that issue with, like, swelling in certain areas of my body that I need to be careful of, um, I don't work out, but I do manual labor for, and I have for most of my life, so I've built up a lot of muscle tolerance, but I don't feel as though I have a whole lot of muscle mass, like gain. I can lift uh, a lot of stuff, 
I, I can push my body uh, quite well. Um, I will say, though, is that I, I do feel like I have the mentality of perhaps uh, the other gender where I am very emotional. I'm very passionate. I I'm I get very attached to things, um, and I sort of need to think and uh, you know work through things out loud. I can't just internalize it. As a man, I have tried to internalize it. You know, I've tried to uh, bury it. You know, push it down and whatnot, and that's just no good. Um, it's a very bad thing for everyone, honestly. Um, there is the sort of generic innate uh, I will say male mentality that uh, you just sort of take whatever the issue is and you place it aside you know we've got boxes that we put stuff in and we sort and categorize it um, but girls just sort of have connections to everything um, like everything's tied together so once you start talking about one thing it leads into this that and the other thing um, and they all sort of tie together. And I'm sort of that way where I can try to uh, organize and prioritize stuff, but it just doesn't really work. And, like, stuff affects me. Stuff that normally shouldn't, you know. I have this problem where I feel that most people would be able to overcome this small thing. Like, it's, it's not a big deal, but it affects me so much. And then I just can't let it go and all these little things just build up until I basically lose it um, one of the biggest things that bothers me is when stuff that should work doesn't work um, a good example of this uh, you know besides you know computers and applications um, but like if you just bought something it's brand new it should work and doesn't work um, but the prime example of this is if you have ever, ever tried to coil or uncoil uh, a rope, a hose, or a cable, and you're just like, you know, you're dragging it along, you're even tw twisting it so that it like does it in the way that it should, and then it just kinks on you, or it just gets stuck, or it just won't roll up for whatever reason that throws me off the edge um, you're describing being humans and then saying that it is specific to one to, to feel like that oh no 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 I, I was saying that for the boxes versus connections thing is a lie um, here's my response to that my retort if you will um, is that there are always exceptions for everything um, especially with all these people that are now feeling able to um, not just express themselves differently, but accept and, you know, explore that, you know, being able to um, pursue their own individuality because everybody's different. Everybody is unique and special, you know. Um, my, my example of the boxes versus... Uh, connections thing um, that was just a very generic um, metaphor I think is the correct word uh, metaphor for uh, I feel like for the most part very you know again baseline male and female men you know when you when you think of like the very generic you know, most men are introverts, most women are extroverts, where girls socialize, you know, they can interact, they can hang out and whatnot. Men very much uh, don't necessarily hide their feelings and whatnot, but that's sort of, the, that was the, the base thing that I was trying to get to, um, or touch on, basically. That was the, the very small thing that I was touching on. Um, sorry, I need water. Actually, I'm out of water. Hold on, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Sorry. Um, but that was just sort of a very generic baseline thing that I was trying to touch on. Um, you know, there are stereotypes, you know, but the biggest thing to consider is that there are stereotypes for a reason, you know, not saying that all stereotypes are true, but they did start somewhere for a reason, because if, if you take like statistics, you know, you know, they say 87% of all statistics are made up on the spot. You know, it's, it's one of those things that when you take into the broad spectrum of just like trying to get the general overview, you know, like idea of this, the suppression of feelings being seen as a masculine trait is rather new concept. What? And by admitting that you are suppressing them, you are admitting that you have the same emotions as a woman. Uh... Okay. Not sure what that means. Um... I... I'm not saying that... You know... Suppressing emotions is different than internalizing emotions. Men don't solve things outside, you know. They don't go talking to their, their guy friends trying to, you know, sort through it and, you know, get it sorted out or, you know, in place. They they distract themselves they go work on a project and then slowly over time they're able to sort of um, get a handle on it you know sometimes they're just I, I feel like and maybe again this is something that you have to argue with I feel like men have modes where you know like we're in work mode can't really think about this at the moment um, I do because I was taught it was okay to I'm also not sure what that means. Um, but, you know, there's there's different times where guys work on different things, you know. We're not always, you know, in, you know, silly mode. We're not in, you know, solve problem mode, you know. Sometimes we're in sit on the couch and watch sports mode, you know. That's a very common mode. Oh, Spicy showed up. Boop. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I don't have the sound bits. Um, and again, I really feel like I should not be discussing this because I, I, I'm i very much not only not the person to be discussing this because I'm very much not an expert at this. I would, in fact, go as far to say that I am the most uh, unequipped to be discussing this so I don't know why we're having this conversation unless you want to hop in this call and discuss this with me um, <laughs> I mean I was just going through my life story and then we started talking about this um, I don't know we can move on I'm also tired I should probably go in bed All right. um, I could tell uh, some little stories and whatnot. Um, I would I, I'm not trying to cut this off um other than the fact that I don't think I should be discussing this because I have little to no idea about what I'm talking about. Yes, I do get on many tangents. I will admit that right off the bat that I will start talking about something and then need to expound on something else. I, I'm pretty good that I'm able to backtrack it all, but it, it does take, a, take some time, though. Um, but yeah. If, if you guys want to have the discussion, uh, again, please let me know. I'd love to, uh, you know, this was supposed to be a podcast, not just me talking, you know, we were supposed to have other people in here. Um, but yeah, so uh, if at any point in time you guys want to, you know, get in the voice call, uh, please let me know, you know. I'm not just the overlord here, you know. This is... I think this is my third stream. Uh, my first stream 
was on my birthday. Um, I just recently, um, all right, spicy, that's fine. Um, I just recently joined uh, Otter, um, you know, saw him, was getting, you know, uh, kind of motivated, you know, like maybe I can, you know, start reaching out, um, start doing my thing too. Um, so I, I was going to do a stream and I went and talked to other people, you know, said, hey, I'm going to stream. Would you want to maybe join? Would you want to watch? This is the time I'm going to do it. You know, I, I picked a specific day and time and told a whole bunch of people in multiple servers, you know, I think at least three different servers. And I talked to like more than 20 people. Um, not that those were all people that I was specifically close with, but those were people that were active on the server, you know, usually were acquaintances, basically. One of them was Otter, um, one of them was another streamer, um, and they both said, yeah, I should be available, I should be able to join and be there. The day of my birthday comes up. I wake up early in the morning. I don't have work today. I ask for the day off. I get breakfast. I start streaming. Nobody shows up. Nine straight hours of streaming later, I've beaten the game. Nobody showed up. And it was... It was really disheartening. You know, after the first couple of hours, I was thinking, you know different time zones it's all right you know you know people could probably hop on later i i do realize that there's you know irl stuff but i felt like people would show up you know people said that they were going to show up and maybe i just have bad luck with making plans you know getting groups together maybe it's just i have bad luck on my birthday but I honestly don't celebrate my birthday anymore. I kind of stopped a while ago just because it's been really bad, you know. Probably the worst one was my stream because I, I had high hopes. It was my favorite video game and I really wanted to share it with a lot of my very favorite people and nobody showed up. The second worst one was I, I worked really hard to clean out the front of our house we brought in a bunch of stuff you know we were going to do a cookout we set up a tent uh, we set up the grill we actually set up multiple grills um, we cooked all this food you know we got all this dip you know snacks and treats and whatnot we, we did this really cool thing where we took the tv outside and mounted it to the side of the house so we could hook up like the wii and like other game stations so people could play video games and whatnot and we also got the ping pong table out you know we did all this stuff I think you know and the worst part was that a lot of people did show up like the, it was probably the most people that I, I've ever had come to my birthday party but they all played smash and that's all they did they didn't even eat any of the food, you know. So for like most of the day, I was just playing ping pong with my mom because every single time they started a tournament, I would get a chance to join, but I would always instantly die because I'm not a sweat lord that plays Smash every single hour of every single day of my entire life. So I don't know how to edge guard or juggle or you know grab and cancel and you know I don't know all the move sets you know freaking I play games for fun you know I don't want to play without items I don't want to play on just final destination you know maybe maybe I'm weird you know but I I have this problem where I'm a very giving person. I'm a very patient, complacent person. But you can never give enough. 
that people are going to start giving back. I have this problem where, you know, I get friends. That I meet people that I like, that I think are cool, that I want to, you know, hang out with, be closer with, you know, be friends with, and I, I latch on to them. I, I'm clingy, and then I, I, I'm desperate. I try to get their attention now. I try to do things to make them like me, you know. Like, every single friends group that I've had online, I've, you know, get in a Discord group or whatever, start it on Skype or whatever, but, you know, and hang out and talk and, you know, whatnot, and try to play games together, you know, set up a schedule, and it's rough and, you know, never happens. I would, I would buy games for people, you know, like, hey, you're free right now, I know you don't have money, so here, play this game with me, I really like this game, would you mind playing with me? And they might play with me once, but, you know, they're, they're never really grateful, and, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this. It, it's hard to... It's hard for me because I I didn't have a whole lot of experience growing up socializing, you know. I didn't have a lot of opportunities to learn and to make mistakes where it was okay. You know, I I'm an adult now that if I mess up, it's 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 a real problem. You know. Hello Lolly Prince. Thank you for following. Um, I'm just, I'm torn because, hello, um, I really, I, I want to socialize, I want to hang out with people, but I'm, I'm terrified, I'm not very good at it, and honestly, it it's just never been worth it for me and that's like a very serious problem and I know I'm not the only one that has this but so you know and I have all this good advice for other people and I feel like such a hypocrite because I never follow my own advice but I always say people like it's not about you know being smart or strong or you know it it's just being available being willing to go for it you know at least try it but i i have such social anxiety that i just can't stand being around people for very long and yet the biggest thing that i strive for is to be around people you know friends make everything better doesn't matter what it is doesn't matter what you're going through or you know you could be doing chores and or you know you could be doing something that you hate and if you're doing it with friends it's fun you know sometimes you make a game out of it or whatever but you know I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, it's, it's rough. But the point being that when you... There's no right answer. I completely forgot what I was talking about and where I was going. Other than I, I'm, I'm bad at making friends... And doing, but oh, I was talking about my first time streaming, and then my second stream. Uh, my second stream was I I played Hearthstone. This is my third stream. Um, I don't intend on being a streamer. I'm not here to make views, or make content, or be popular. You know, I I could care less. I don't want to be popular. And yet, I I crave 
attention. I. But it doesn't mean anything unless it's from people that mean something to you. You know? People's opinions don't matter unless the people matter to you. I guess. Is that what I'm trying to say? The, the whole point of, like, socializing isn't to get other people's you know, perspective, so to speak. It's to, you know, I can't socialize casually. I'm, I'm all in, you know. If someone's my friend, I'm their friend for life. I'm always there for them. I try super hard. You know, I'm, I'm too passionate. I care too much, you know. Little things affect me, you know. I I can't just stop caring, you know. And when you think about it, if you if you're doing something and you don't care, you know, most people think that that's good. But if if you're aware, it, you know, if you're gonna do something that you know is gonna affect someone else, whether it be bad or good, if you don't care what the outcome is or if you don't care how it's going to affect other people again bad or good if you don't care that's a problem that's that's you know it's not just about thinking about other people and how we affect them you know everything that you do affects other people for better or for worse and you know sometimes just changing them can be good um, but most of the time it's more of a question of if you should and less about if you can um, yeah it's uh, it's a point of concern for me specifically because the way that I deal with people is that, um, you know, I love everybody, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what's been said or done, I will always care about you and will do my best to help you out no matter what, but if, if there's someone that... I've reached out to it's probably due to the fact that they've affected me in some way you know maybe they maybe I think they're cool maybe they're um, special to me because of some memory we've made together um, you know there's like a whole slew of things that it could be but once I've specifically chosen someone like you you are my friend now that is the label that is the specific thing that is going to last until the end of time you know I feel like I can be overwhelming I am over the top I'm too much sometimes because I not because I'm trying too hard but because me who I am is too much. It's not okay. It really is. And it's taken me a long time to learn that, to, you know, see that. That, you know, right, hopping on your bike and riding across town because one of your friends is not responding to you to try and help cheer them up is not okay you know it's sweet you know it's a very cool thing to do it's it's a boss move to make but you shouldn't do that that's that's too much that's something that you read about in fiction it's just not something that happens that's not normal that's not acceptable you know, 
I I go out of my way to help people. I go out of my way to not make myself what they want or need. I used to do that. What I do now, though, is... Um, depends on the circumstance. I will say that... Hold on. I need water. <laughs> There's a difference between trying to be there for someone, like trying to be what they need or what they want because you care and, you know, sometimes people will just see what they want to see in you. It doesn't matter what you say or do. Um... And if you ever do anything to break that vision of you, they will hate you forever. I've learned that firsthand. Uh, you know, I, I've been bullied, and I've been put on a pedestal. And honestly, being put on the pedestal is sometimes worse, because, you know, it's, it's one thing to be hated for something that you're not. And it's another thing to be liked and admired for something that you're not. You know, to be used as a placeholder or as a doll. To, like, have them, you know, you're not what they want, but they're going to use you for now. You know, just to fill that. Um, I got off topic. The point I was trying to make is that when you when you try to be something that you're not for someone else it it depends more upon your heart and sort of what they need i suppose because me personally if someone tries to tell me what i want to hear that is not what i want to hear i above all else want people to be real with me you know to tell the truth I don't care what it is I don't care if you hate me or if you don't like me or if you've got something good or negative to say to me I I want the truth and that's because with so much with my life I've struggled with you know I've suffered due to the fact that people aren't being forthright with me or that, you know, people are lying and it, it really hurts me and other people and there's nothing I can do about it and it's fake, it's false and there's nothing that I can do about it. So I, I personally hate lying and that's probably why I don't like makeup because I feel like it's lying but also because I think people are beautiful no matter what they sound or look like or do, you know. I think who people are you know, just being who they are is amazing. But I understand that people, you know, want to dress up and, you know, that's fine. You can tell a lot about a person by, you know, how they dress up, what kind of show and airs they put on and whatnot, you know. Uh, that was a tangent. Backtracking from tangent processing. Um, you know, I don't like lying. Let's see, what was what was before the I don't like lying, um, or I don't like people lying to me, putting on airs and trying to make people happy, can can be nice, but I feel like if you've ever watched any Disney film, where somebody's liked someone else, and they have lied and pretended to be something that they're not, just for that person. It, it always fails because not just because you lied and you get found out but because you have forced yourself into the situation where you have to become the thing that you're not which is hard and it's unenjoyable and most of the time it doesn't work and you either get found out or you're just you're incapable of doing it anymore and you have to stop 
and then people are upset that you lied to them rather than being truthful with them which then makes them feel like they can't be trusted you know or that you are untrustworthy now which is a problem and you should always ever be true to yourself anyways because you know I mean if there's people that like one thing and you're not that just be yourself because there's probably people out there that like you for who you are as weird as that may sound it's true there are like billions of people out there um, but yeah so it's always good to you know be yourself and you know eventually maybe hopefully you'll find people that are like minded or you know tolerant I suppose you know I mean <laughs> never mind I'm not going to make that joke um there there are clubs for everything so you know even if you're you, if you like are if if your opinion is you know underrated or unappreciated or not widely accepted there are probably people out there that are also like-minded so find those people I guess or whatever <clears throat> sorry I need lots of water um, I forget where we were going with this like the whole the whole spiel the whole point backtracking to person that I am and sort of the things that I'm like and what I deal with don't like lying because of my past and whatnot yep I, I've completely forgot um hmm <laughs> yep can't seem to find any anchor points so all I'll go into a little bit more about me and ah now I remember don't want to be popular but let's go off on this tangent real quick um I have a bad memory I feel as though it's because when I was very young and my sister used to be the queen of the castle uh, needed all the attention uh, I was born and so, you know, baby gets priority, uh, which was no, not good for uh, this child who had the entire world. You know, she wasn't spoiled, but she was very much, uh, need well, you, you know how kids are. Um, when I was born, my sister pulled me off the changing table and tried to kill me um, and I do have you know babies have soft skulls um, I do have this dent in my head uh, due to that which I think and I could be wrong you know uh, but I have done a lot of research because when I was being bullied I would go spend time by myself so I'd spend a lot of time researching what's wrong with me or whatever uh, so I've done a lot of research into psychology and you know parts of the brain and whatnot I believe and I could be wrong my my issue because of where this is connected in my head my limbic system is messed up basically what the limbic system does is it controls memories and whatnot uh, it, it handles the the intake um, you know how information comes in then the categorization how it's ordered how it's stored and then the recalling so it's three things it's intake storing and recall um and i have trouble with that so i don't remember a lot of things um but there's a lot of things that i did used to remember and then they're like so hard to figure out where they are um and even then it, like trying to recall them is also difficult and you know I lose bits and pieces and whatnot um, 
and I, I want to go into a t an, another tangent about dreams, but because I've done a lot of research into dreams, but I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to continue with my thing. Uh, I have bad memory. You know, I believe this is why I was retarded for most of my years growing up. Um, but that's the reason why I started doing YouTube was so that I had a place that I could keep memories. You know, that's the whole reason why I record. And that's the reason why I'm going to stream. And once I'm done streaming here, I'm going to take this video from Twitch and I'm going to upload it onto my YouTube channel so that it stays because um, you can't keep videos on Twitch. Twitch is a streaming service. You know, it's live. It's all about the, the here and now and being present. And, you know, I completely understand that. And, again, I could go off on Twitch and YouTube. Those are things that I could very much talk on long detail with. Um, but I won't go into those tangents, I promise. Um, but I, I very much treasure memories because I, I don't have many. I, I don't remember stuff. That's why I live in the moment, you know. I used to spend so much of my life worrying, you know, overthinking, you know, trying to think of how I'm going to impact that person or what, what's going to happen if I do this, that, and the other thing. I spent so much of my life hiding you know, staying silent, passive, uh, not a, I, I would go out of my way to avoid conflict, like, I, I never wanted to bother anybody, and I still do, to some extent, but, um, I'm trying different things now. I'm trying to break the cycle. You know, step out of my shell. I have a hard time being vulnerable. I am only ever real with people. I am straightforward truth teller because I have nothing to hide. And that can be a good or a bad thing because, oh, this was the whole point that I was trying to get to is that uh, I don't BS people. I don't lie. I, I tell them the truth. I'm straightforward with people. I tell them straight up, this is what I think, this is how I feel, and this is what I think you need to know. But you you just don't do that. You shouldn't do that with people. You know, some some things are okay, but not all the time. You know, you should never just walk up to someone and, you know, berate them on, like, what, what the rules are or what you think is good and acceptable, you know. You shouldn't be like, hey, don't smoke cigarettes, those things will kill you, because you don't know if that person is doing that to escape, or if smoking reminds them of someone that they lost, or if they have an addiction and don't know how to solve it, you know. There's so much about other people that we just don't know, and oh, this is also going back to the thing that I was originally going to talk about, is lying and storytelling is that I, I would spend so much trying to decipher someone spend my time in their shoes get to learn them because you know you, you can meet somebody randomly off the street and you would only get a snapshot and maybe they're screaming and yelling and you would think that, oh, they're just an angry person. But they could be the quietest person. You would never know. Because they're just having a bad day. 
and you you are going to hold that against them for the rest of their life it's sad to say and but i've experienced this that people are going to believe the first story that they hear and they're not going to wait until all the information is in until and that's why i try so hard to listen to everyone to not make judgments until I specifically meet with that one person, discuss with them, you know, I don't, I don't listen to gossip, I don't believe what other people tell me about someone else until I personally experience them myself, and then I can slowly start to put the pieces together, but, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you just gotta go for it, you can't just hold off and wait until you know it's all said and done there's been so many times in my life where I've waited for so long because I needed to get every single bit of detail known before I was confident enough to try anything by then it's too late and even then it still doesn't work you know it's not good enough <sighs> hold on There's only so much that you can do. There's only so much time. It's only so much you can learn and know and remember. And that's why I live in the moment. I try my best. I try my hardest. But most importantly, I... And I... <laughs> I'm like thinking of all these different tangents that I want to go off of, but I'm trying to solidify this. I'm trying to put a put a finisher on this. I hmm. Hmm. <sighs> I'm starting to lose it now. The whole point of you know being alive is actually living it you know if you if you study and, and again I'm saying you but I'm talking about myself I'm talking from experience because I I've never confessed to anyone until I was confident in what the response was going to be which was no. Which is stupid because that should be like the worst outcome that you don't want to happen. So you should at least try and, you know, go for the gamble and hope to get a yes. And if you have a no, then you continue on, you know. It's better to have loved and lost than to not have even tried it's the not knowing that's gonna kill you so you have to at least try you know give it a shot you know sometimes you don't want to just run up there and be like hey yes or no you know you can you know you can do some stuff you can try and you know actually get to know someone first before just also speaking from experience um but I was I was never confident enough to to accept a yes or a no without knowing the answer beforehand, which is stupid. You know you should try you know and hope, try your best you know go for it and but you have to leave it up to them. That's the hard part. I I have trouble stepping out of my comfort zone and allowing the possibility of not just failure. I'm not even afraid of failure. I'm I'm afraid of not knowing, I guess. Not being prepared. Because there there have been people that I've been wanting have wanted to 
get to know, spend my time with, and I just didn't. I think Men in Black summed up the love and loss mentality really well in a short scene between K and J. I don't know what scene you're referring to. It might have been... Maybe I've only seen Men in Black 2. I think I've seen both. But I could... I think I've seen both. But I'm probably just not remembering. Again, my memory's not very good. But the... Uh, the thing I struggle with is not being vulnerable. You know, I'm not... I'm, I'm capable, but I'm not willing to do something without knowing what the result is going to be. The scene where he says, hey, you know what they say, right? It's better to have loved and lost than never loved at all. Try it. Okay. You're just quoting someone saying a quote. I mean, it's probably on the back of a bubblegum wrapper as well, somewhere. Um, you know, the the point being is that you should have at least tried, you know, even if someone just turns you down, at least you know, you know. And maybe you would have spent, like, months trying to get in touch with someone, and if you had just gone up and asked them and realized that they're a jerk... Then you would have been able to move on or whatever. Or maybe you could have spent like all those months planning and preparing actually being with that person. And maybe you didn't get to spend the time with them as that special someone, but... And again, I'm trying to be generic enough that this isn't like love advice, but... You know you at least try you could at least get a smidgen of something it's the not knowing that's going to kill you so it's better to have at least attempted I don't know it's hmm hmm Sorry, I need more water. Um, <sighs> I I wasted so much of my life because I was afraid. I I really wanted to be on the track team, not for really any reason in particular. Um, but there, there's, you know, I just kind of wanted to do it. And honestly, it's been the biggest regret of my life of not joining the track team because I think that could have been a really good opportunity for me. You know, I, I struggle in school, so I would always go home and study on my own and try and decipher and figure out what we were taught that day because I just couldn't learn in school. I didn't learn in class. So I didn't have any life outside of school. When I went home, I just went home and studied. I did homework. But I think track and field would have been good for me. It would have been physical. It would have been social. But there's two things that held me back. One, I have bad lungs. I... And it might be because of, you know, bullying. You know, like, my rib cage is kind of scuffed, not gonna lie. Um, I've also had the wind knocked out of me countless times, so that might be something could just be genetics I don't know 
actually, something that it could be is that I really didn't talk for most of my life. Huh. Huh. I'm just kind of now thinking about that. Not, not just that I was soft-spoken, but I really didn't talk for most of my life. Um, anyways, I, I have bad lungs. Um, so that's the reason why I have trouble singing. Um, but, but I love to run. You know, I, I have the physicality. I, I have very strong legs. I have the physical endurance to, like, run strong and hard and long but I don't have the lungs for it um but yeah the other reason is that the uh the girl that I had a crush on for all of high school was in track and field and I was afraid um I was afraid of her for all of high school it's really stupid. And she probably didn't even know I existed. Which is fine. Um, I will say that sort of at the very end of high school... I told her. I didn't confess, but I did relinquish that information. That this is sort of what my situation was and just sort of, I, I felt like she deserved to know, um, and she took it kind of well, you know, she was like, all right, that's kind of cool, I am seeing someone, I was like, no, yeah, no, 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 it's totally fine, I just, anyways, it's, uh, it's kind of stupid, just it's a bit of a, yeah, um, I should have tried, though. I should have, you know, I should have put myself out there. I should have went and at least tried. And even if they said that I couldn't be on, you know, their team, at least I could have been part of the club, you know, because I don't know. Um, I, th I, I think there's like a thing in like schools that they actually like compete or whatever. Um, maybe I couldn't have been a part of that because I wasn't good enough, but I, I at least could have been part of, like, the after-school thing. I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't research it very much, so I didn't get into it. But it's been one of my biggest regrets. And I'm slowly losing viewers. And it is starting to get late, and I should... Uh, shut down for the night anyways because I do have work in the morning but um and this was this was pretty good I mean it was pretty bad but I did start to get some stuff out there I I feel like I need to do this more because I don't like talking but I do talk a lot there's so much that I need to say, you know, you know, talking about my feelings and my problems doesn't help me. Uh, I always feel like I'm just sort of explaining to people, which is, you know, all well and good, but it doesn't like work through my problems or whatnot. And I feel like because I'm, I'm not good at explaining things, so I just, you know, ramble until something you know vaguely can be understood so I think I need to do more talks like this even if it's just me you know putting my my mind on the line my voice out there to be heard it's at least something I suppose you know so I I'm going to podcast more. I'm gonna I'm gonna do more of this. 
And to say that it's for me is incorrect because I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for everyone else. All my friends that you know, I see people out there streaming putting themselves, you know, in the public eye in it's it's amazing and something that I could never do because I could never be that public, you know. I could I don't like being watched. I I I could probably live stream my entire life. But you know, I don't I don't I don't get it. I don't understand the point. I don't know why, you know. But one of my biggest, you know, things that I tell people is that you and who you are, what you think and what you say is very unique and special and only you can do it and that can impact other people because, you know, they would never be able to think that way unless you shared with them. So it's very important that you share you with other people. And that's why I really respect and appreciate people that stream or make content in any way, basically. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to I'm gonna try and put myself out there more because not that I necessarily think that people need to hear what I have to say, but I have a lot to say. And I've got to start somewhere. You know, and it, it can't be just on other people's streams. You know, I can't just ride on people's coattails or come into their thing and, you know, throw my whatever, you know. Because it should be about them. So that's why I'm doing my thing. So this is about me doing my thing here trying to share what I've got basically that's really the biggest thing and whatnot um I don't plan on you know becoming twitch member or affiliate no I'm not here to make money that would be nice uh I don't think it's gonna happen though probably just won't pursue that um you know my my youtube videos aren't monetized they can be but i choose not to i choose not to monetize them um i've not designed my content for you know public viewing pleasure you know it's it's sort of made to be you know i've I very much make everything that I say and do capable to be viewed by everyone. And I include everyone. I mean, literally any age, you know, I I would not feel uncomfortable about, you know, my parents or even my children, you know, watching and listening to what I say and do. And it's not even stressful, you know, it's just who I am. And maybe, maybe that's confidence. That's probably the only thing that I have confidence in, is that I am me. Because that's all I can be, basically. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm probably going to end it right at the, the two hour mark, which is in five minutes. So if anyone has anything they want to say right before we end, that would be a good time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to gonna try and stream more. And it's probably just going to be this. Just just talking. We'll see, though.
there will probably be days that I come home that I want to play something. My goodness, I can't remember the last time that I played something. It's been so long. Um, but I could, like, do that. Um, I can't talk and do stuff at the same time, though. Talking, you know, I'm not a multitasker, so talking will probably be the primary thing if I am talking. Um, Dr. Force says, Hey, I know you said this isn't for you, but talking stuff out has its own benefits. Also, roly-poly burb. Yes, I been looking for bird uh, images uh, I don't know um, it's also a good thing for streamers and podcasters to at least have some sort of gif um, going on their screen in case they are looking at a static image um, just to make sure that you know the audience can tell if uh, their stream freezes or whatever um, so I am at least a little bit professional in that sense. Um, I do have um, these other things. Um, oh, actually, I can't show those screens because it's just going to show my desktop. But I'll show you this one. You know, there's that one. Uh, there's also this one I made for whatever reason. Not sure why it exists, but uh, anyways, going back to this one. Got about three minutes left. Also, I think if things are purely static too long, Twitch gets all hissy and bans people. Huh. That's interesting. What do you mean, ban people? Like me? My channel? They're going to ban me? Or people in the chat? Um, because I did um, start my channel, like, my Twitch channel. Uh, earlier, actually no, it was last year, I, I think is when I did my stream, that's when I w met Otter, uh, it's been like several months since then, um, Twitch do be crazy, um, I will be trying to do more stuff though, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and call it. Thank you, everyone that came out, stayed here to the end and whatnot. Um, the streamer. It was something about making sure people aren't just streaming non-content to punk the system. Not sure what that means. I will be trying to stream regularly, though. I'm gonna be mixing it up and whatnot, but, uh, you know, if Twitch drops me, honestly, don't even care, um, because, again, I'm not here for that, and I'll get into all of the, all that nonsense about what my opinions of Twitch and whatnot, uh, some other time. Your voice is very nice when you just talk. Thank you. Um, I've been told that. If anyone has any, you know, topic discussions to discuss or whatever, or would like to, uh, you know, talk about, let me know and I'll do that. Um, also, stories. If you just want me to read something, I'd love to do that as well. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to call it a night, call it a session, call it a stream. And uh, thank you again, everyone that came out. Parting wishes. You are all beautiful and amazing. Thank you. It's never stopped being you.